So as a result, mid-level, sometimes bureaucrats in the Department of Transportation who might have a good relationship with the contractor were saying yes. We have saved millions and millions of dollars just in the last two years by saying no change orders unless the director of the Ohio Department of Transportation signs off. And he said no more often than he said yes. So the point is that there is no magic solution. You know, H.L. Mencken said that for every complex problem, there's a solution that is simple, neat, and wrong. And so <laughs> I would say to you that we don't have the magic fix, but if we attack this agency by agency, board by board, we absolutely can do this. I'll give you just one other example, and that is that with regard to prisons. Now, you're right, we just can't release people, but we can engage in sentencing reform and to make sure that the most violent offenders are locked up and locked up for a long time and in some cases for good, but that the nonviolent offenders get a second chance. And so that's exactly what the governor did in this budget. He's proposing sentencing reform logical strategic sentencing form that will alleviate the overcrowding and not cause safety problems in the state. That's creative and it's a way to save money. Uh, Lee, your report was very inspirational. Uh, a lot of work has to be done on image, not only for Cleveland, for Ohio. Cleveland Airport is an embarrassment as the front door, not only to Cleveland, but to Ohio. It's the only international airport in Ohio Cincinnati's is in Kentucky. Does the state have any interest in, in enhancing that image and uh, helping the city of Cleveland improve the front door? Uh, yes, and obviously uh, I defer to the mayor who I know this is a very important issue to him. The mayor and I, by the way, meet every single month uh, for an hour and a half to talk about uh, the partnership between the city of Cleveland and the state of Ohio. Uh, and we often bring up issues where we can help each other. This is often on the list as some of the other things that I mentioned. Uh, and I can guarantee you that the mayor will answer this question in the state of the city. <laughs> How's that for punning? Okay, that's our partnership. That's what we agreed to. We agreed that when I don't have the answer, ask the mayor. So the, I, but I don't mean to be facetious, because it is our front door and it's very important, and the state is absolutely, positively willing to be a financial partner with the mayor in making sure that we improve the image of our front door at Cleveland Hopkins. And by the way, the mayor's already made some very significant investments in that direction. And you don't always see them, but you will. Uh, and so I think it's, we have to give the mayor a great deal of credit for the fact that while we may not be quite where we want to be compared to other uh, cities, we are well on our way because of what he's done and with the new airport director. Ricky, Ricky Smith, right? Ricky is uh, one of the most innovative airport directors in the country, and, and he will also answer that question when he's up here, too. Okay. <laughs> Would you mind sharing with us the uh, attitude and intention of the administration toward privatizing of state assets? Um, you know, it's a fair question, and I will say this to you. At a time of economic crisis, everything needs to be on the table. So although the governor and I have always been skeptical about privatizing assets, we are not taking it off the table. Uh, and it's like anything else, you do a cost-benefit analysis. Uh, and whether it's state buildings, whether it's the lottery, whether it's the turnpike, each one deserves its own separate analysis, uh, cost-benefit ratio, and determine whether or not, in the end, the short-term benefit outweighs perhaps long-term detriments or minimize the long-term detriments. In almost every case of privatizing, there is a short-term gain, almost always. But if that's all you look at, you're not doing a service to the people of Ohio. What's the long-term? And if the long-term, can eat, uh, the negatives either can be minimized or you can turn them into positives, then absolutely we're open to it. What are the current plans when we get the stimulus money, however much it is from the bill that's signed, where are we going to put those dollars to work? What? projects, where does the money go? Uh, I'm done, Ralph. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> it was a bad idea to take another question. Yeah. Uh, actually, I have a good answer. Uh, the White House has recently said that the state that is furthest along in putting together a mechanism for distributing the stimulus is the state of Ohio. Why? Governor Strickland, that's what, 
as you know, Governor Strickland appointed a Clevelander, Ron Richards, uh, the president of the Cleveland Foundation, to be our infrastructure czar, which means that for the next six months to a year, Ron, on a voluntary basis, is going to be helping use his private and nonprofit resources and his expertise to help us. We've just hired a full-time executive director to administer the infrastructure and stimulus program. We have put together a state-of-the-art interactive website that went up just yesterday. Uh, and I wish I had that website address with me, and I should have had it, and I don't have it. What is it? Uh, that's right. I just wanted to see if you knew. www.recovery.ohio.gov. Thank you. Uh, and so the bottom line is that uh, until this actually happens, that we'll, we'll probably still have more questions than we'll answers. But we have put together the infrastructure to respond very, very quickly. For example, today, a city can make an application on that website, uh, as many mayors have already done. And it will all funnel through that recovery website. And then what we've done is that we've identified what we call owners. Uh, every cabinet director, and of which I am one, has a responsibility for certain items that we've identified in the bill. And the Department of Development, for example, has 36 different provisions in the current provision of the federal stimulus bill that we are responsible for. And we've already assembled a team in the Department of Development whose main focus over the next year will to make sure that we receive, identify, and prioritize the applications as they come in. Today at the City Club of Cleveland Forum, we have been listening to Ohio's Lieutenant Governor Lee Fisher. Thank you, Lee. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. This forum is now adjourned. For information on upcoming speakers or for podcasts of the City Club, go to cityclub.org.